Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off with an update concerning the release date of the RTX 40 series of graphics cards from NVIDIA, aka Lovelace. Believe it or not, it's been almost a year and a half since the RTX 3080 and other Ampere graphics cards debuted. With all of the shortages, of course, many people still don't have these cards, but yeah, they actually did technically launch in September of 2020, which is kind of ridiculous, like damn, that time went really quickly, didn't it? If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I frequently said that I've been hearing that Lovelace is going to launch late Q3 or early Q4. And now very well-renowned uh, Lika Grayman is saying much the same thing. He said that Lovelace should have no problem coming out in September. And this is part of a larger thread where he also mentioned so far, I know the next generation GPUs have not been delayed. It, in fact, it's not far, only more than half a year, is it not? Also in this same thread, it was mentioned that Narve 31 could be releasing in Q1 2023, but uh, Narve 33 could be releasing in Q4. Now, I don't know if this is true. Personally, I've not heard it. I'm going to do some investigation with my own sources, but I'm just mentioning it in this video for completeness sake. And it is important to note that Grayman himself didn't mention it. Again, I'll be doing a little bit of investigation. I'm still hearing that it's going to launch in Q4 for both 33 and 31, but maybe something slipped. Either way, yeah, the RTX 40 series is highly anticipated, as is, of course, RDNA 3, because, quite frankly, there are massive jumps in performance compared to what we have currently. Not that the 6800 XT, for example, is a slouch of a card. It really isn't. But all of this is also coming at very interesting time in the market, and this is a nice segue, actually, into a second topic. And courtesy, by the way, to 3dcenter.org, who have actually done a really good job of compiling a crap ton, that's a technical term, of data. Now, I'll let you guys, you know, kind of look at the graph that they've put together here, because it's very telling. And you yourself can see that with the Ethereum prices, which is the yellow, well, I was going to say line, but I don't think line even. It looks more like a bloody roller coaster, let's just be honest, and one that you might actually uh, be sick with after you've kind of come off it, but whatever. Um, yeah, so with the Ethereum prices absolutely just crashing at the moment, although Ethereum's not the only thing that has, if any investors are watching this, you're probably uh, nodding your head in agreement. Furthermore, the green and red trend lines here, well, you can see yourself that the prices are diminishing. Now, this is not to say that they are at MSRP prices. No, they are not. Far from it. In fact, we can still see that certain SKUs are considerably higher. For example, the 6800 XT could be like over 88% over its MSRP, which is obviously not good. By the way, these retailers are German and Austria. However, it is a positive sign forward. I will also say that I quickly looked at eBay UK and I looked at a couple of cards, including the RTX 3080 and um, some also legacy products like the RX 480 and Vega, and there do seem to be reductions in prices. Now, of course, just like anything, it's going to take a while for things to really start to come to the market. However, the good news is that now we've had NVIDIA, who have said that they expect availability to be better for, you know, later this year. So let's say the second half. Intel have said much the same thing, although it will, of course, depend much on the actual parts themselves. So, for example, what process they're being produced on and so on and so on. Plus the fact that Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies are declining. So, you know, Ethereum, well, things could change. But as of the time I'm recording this anyway, the, you know, the, the plan is for it to become proof of stake, basically June. It could possibly slip. It slipped many times previously, but that's what the theory is. So the thing is, if a miner is buying a card, they may not be able to recuperate their um, you know, the, their, their investment in time, because obviously, as of, again, the time I'm recording this, it's late January, and yeah, it really does depend what happens to the market, like, they could speculatively mine, but also they may not particularly want to buy a crap ton of 
just for the sake of argument, 6800 XTs and then maybe not even recuperate their cost. So this is definitely positive news, at least in my personal opinion. And this is particularly true when we move on to our third piece of news, and that is actually memory configurations of Intel's Arc GPUs. Well, actually, this is specifically for laptops, but, you know, with the third player entering the market later this year, it will also definitely help the gamers, although we have absolutely no idea, by the way, how well uh, Arc would do for mining, but hopefully Intel will put some type of, you know, hash rate limiter on their card but i don't think that's been confirmed yet maybe you know maybe i'm wrong on that a anyway the uh twitter account hxl or 9550 pro um has actually uh, leaked a slide for dg2 graphics memory configuration now again this is the mobile SKU. you can see dg2 nb SKU. now what's really cool here is we can even see the different layouts of the memory and, well, just for example, you can see the eight chips which create the 256-bit bus, which is in SKU-1, which is 512 execution units. So we actually have further confirmation as to the specification of the GPU in terms of the number of execution units. Interestingly, there doesn't seem to be any reference here of the 448 execution unit variant, which actually matches up to what I've mentioned a couple of times in my own videos. I think this might be canceled. Maybe it'll come later on, or maybe it's a desktop only SKU, but I, at the moment anyway, it doesn't seem to be something that's launching, uh, well, at launch. Anyway, point being that um, we now see that uh, the maximum bandwidth for the desktop, sorry, for the mobile configuration is 512 gigabytes per second, which is actually fairly reasonable. This is pretty much the same as the RTX 3080 Ti, so that's for the laptop, just so that we're clear. So that should mean that there's a fairly decent amount of bandwidth available for the GPU. Again, we don't really know how bandwidth scales on the architecture since it's not released yet. So it'll be interesting to do, as always, when any new architecture is released, it'll be interesting to do investigation. For example, what happens if you increase memory, uh, memory clock frequency versus core clock frequency and so on and so on. Those are things that are cool, just if nothing else, just from the perspective of understanding more of the architecture itself. But yeah, I'm quite hyped to see what Intel actually does with Alchemist, Intel Arc Alchemist. I think that having another player, as I've mentioned several times at this point, is going to be very beneficial. For me, I find not just the introduction of the architecture itself and the fact that we get extra competition from Intel to be interesting, but also how both AMD and NVIDIA themselves will respond to it. I suspect it will be rather telling. Um, I'm particularly curious how NVIDIA's marketing for things like DLSS may change in the future. And I'm also interested to see how a like-for-like -like comparison for example, let's say we have a SKU like the 3070 Ti. How will this compare against DG2 for not just, you know, traditional things, but what about ray tracing performance, for example? That will be mighty curious, at least in my personal opinion. But with this said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.